All right, welcome back. So I'm gonna go over five techniques I employ to be a little bit faster in the field. You're not gonna be, um, you know, super fast. You're not gonna be competing with, you know, sloppy fast type tech, techs, but you're going to be a lot, a lot more efficient. And um, all those little, little things add up. The little bits of uh, speed or little efficiencies, they're gonna add up over your day and it's definitely gonna add up over your stress level. So, um, Keep watching, I'm gonna show you how to be a little bit faster during the day. All right, tip one. First and foremost, and I always stress, I've been stressing this from the beginning of the channel, get digital tools, you know? Um, I know it sounds like a cop-out, I know it sounds like just trying to um, lean on the tools, or use them as a crutch, but the tools, if you use um, proper digital manifolds, uh, digital psychrometers, um, uh, what do you call it temperature line temperature probes it's going to give you a lot more accurate and if you when you're using them together as a kit as a system it's going to give you a lot more accurate and it's going to give you um just a better look into what's going on with the system not using the proper instruments the proper tools could definitely cost you um, a lot of time also they just save you time and calculating um, you know just the different math that needs to be done it does all that automatically you don't have to worry about any uh, PT charts all that stuff is already uh, you know uh, integrated within software um, whether proprietary or third-party software that um, that works or interfaces with the the digital probes or instruments so um, you know you're definitely not doing yourself any favor I know a lot of guys I had a comment the other day guys saying oh uh, what is it? Digital tools are all good until they you essentially, which I'm not sure. I'm not even sure where that type of logic comes from, but I mean, all the instruments after a while are going to fail, whether it's analog or digital. You know, you got to calibrate analog gate uh, manifolds. So there's definitely everything is going to fail over time. So the digital instruments are going to give you a lot more efficiency, they're going to give you a lot more um, insight on what's going on in the system and it's just gonna lead to that much more efficiency for you doing your job, all right? Tip two, use Measure Quick. And I mean, I don't get any sponsorships from Measure Quick. I have no relationship with Measure Quick, but it's a super powerful um, software. It's like a data and um, uh, instrument aggregation software where it essentially basically lets you use a variety of different probes, um, test instruments, meters, uh, manifolds, and essentially lets you, it aggregates all that information and data into a, a nice um, streamlined platform. And, and like I said, it, it really, it's got a really good onboard diagnostic um, system in there to where, you know, if your pressures are within a certain range or out of a certain with um, out of the range to a certain degree it's going to put literally red flags in the software showing you um, potential whether it be you know potential airflow if your suction line is too lo low and along with um, temp split too high different flags will um, trigger um, a diagnosis of the system so it might flag an airflow issue potential airflow um, there's all sorts, I mean, there's probably hundreds of different um, feedback um, diagnostic flags that will actually um, pop up based off of your pressures and temperatures. But remember with that software, you know, like Jim says, garbage in, garbage out. So if you don't put the proper information in, if you don't put your proper, um, you know, your system, whether it's a, a metering device type or, you know, electrical data, um, it's not going to it's not going to be of any use to you so you have to put the proper information in but it definitely um, it streamlines the process it could also give you um, just kind of nudge you in the right direction if you if you're scratching your head a little bit especially for newer techs um, I know I was actually um, fortunate enough to use it when I was a little bit start using it when I was a little bit newer a little bit greener in the field and um, it got me out of a lot of jams especially um, situations where you might have um, you know duck leaks and attics I've actually had it work flag that a duck leak in an attic for it um, either way when I'm going in the attic seeing that there was a big leak once I put my um, return side probe in the 
um, plenum. That's another thing. I recommend you definitely want to put your probes in the plenum right before the um, fan, so that way you get the true temperature of the air going in. Don't. I sometimes still do it. I'm not gonna lie. Don't put your probes um, in the registers if you can help it. I know sometimes we're trying to rush in and out of there, and that's the you know the quickest way to do it, but. Let me stop. I digress a little bit on that. So basically, long story short, use a program like MeasureQuick. I think it's the only one of its kind that I've found. So just use MeasureQuick. It's going to help you be a lot quicker in the field. It's going to help you to be, um, actually, it's going to teach you a lot as well, If you're especially if you're new or even old. A lot of guys aren't using uh, this digital stuff. So yeah, give it a shot. All right, my third tip for... Um, upping your speed, increasing your speed in the field is going to be use non-invasive testing when, when possible. Um, and that's going to be just the general basics. You know, you've got your, you've got um, taking the temp splits, you've got checking your uh, suction line and um, liquid line temperature, and you know, just uh, check your approach, things like that. So you want to use your outdoor air temperature to, um, check your approach and uh, like I said once again measure quick has a really cool um, feature within there it's non-invasive where they actually they use all those um, temperatures and they kind of uh, have a formula to come up with the pressures that it should be coil temperatures saturation temperature in the condensers and evaporated temperature and it uh, comes up with your superheat so you can pretty much use your non-invasive temperatures to guesstimate what your superheat and your uh, sub cooling are so um, I recommend doing that like you know if you change a say you change a capacitor or something like that or just do something a blower motor or something like that just do a quick non-invasive check check your liquid line suction line and your temp splits check your volts and amps you can actually check your capacity you know I'd use your um, I'd use the multimeter to do check the power factor um, check the capacitor before you um, plug everything back up you can check the power factor using a, a power meter so essentially um, non-invasive te techniques will definitely help you be a lot quicker and I know um, you know a lot of guys that's still too much that still takes too much time trying to pull out digital psychrometers turn them on sync them to your phone so even if you don't want to do that if you don't want to go that far I'd say Keep keep get a little infrared thermometer, keep it in your pocket and your side pocket or something. They're like fifteen, twenty dollars. And um just check your splits, check the thermostat temperature, you know, and basically shoot up at the registers and see if you got a decent temperature split between the thermostat temperature and uh what you're getting at your supplies. And that'll give you a general even check the use the thermometer, infrared thermometer, check your suction line temperature and your liquid line temperature. You can, you know, if you don't want to use your probes and sink and all that type of stuff, that's still going to get you a lot. Um, it's going to be a lot better than just putting your hand in front of the vents and essentially, you know, just bailing out of there. So just try that out. Um, non invasive techniques, that's going to be a, a big help. All right, three. The third technique is going to be call the customers on the way to each call and that way you can get um, a general idea of what's going on with the uh, system i.e. say I like to ask them okay is the air is the fan running do you feel air coming out of the vents is anything coming out is it not keeping up or is the outdoor unit running I know usually if they tell me the outdoor unit's not running I'm gonna start the outdoor unit first thing I'm gonna do spin the fan I'm gonna check voltage well first thing I'm gonna do is um yeah spin the fan if I hear it humming if that thing starts up I'm checking the capacitor if I don't hear any humming I'm probably gonna check the um, voltage first take the door off check the voltage see what's going on with that maybe check the contactor so there's ways to kind of um, you know just get a head start you know even if the they tell you um, something as simple as oh it's not keeping up on hotter days you just base, you know, you know, you put your gauges on there if the if the outdoor unit's running and uh, check the check the charge level. Like, you can get a lot of information. I know a lot of times customers have steered me wrong, but you can definitely get a lot of information out of them. So, um, yeah, that, that can help you to be a little bit more efficient in your job. So, do that. Start calling them on the way to the jobs. Um, don't be too proud. It's not really, you know, you, you don't have to 
be a know-it-all you know they just want to know that you're trying to get their system fixed so just give that a shot and see if that helps all right all right tip number four try to remove guesswork try to remove any type of um you know situations where you're going to just kind of be questioning yourself uh, i.e the simplest example of I've got of that is just literally take pictures of everything before you even start working on it um if you're newer obviously if you're um you know seasoned and you know how to read schematics and you know basically the, the circuits and what's going on in the system that's not going to be as much for you but if you're newer tech trying to learn how to be faster just take pictures before you mess with anything I know that's how I started anytime I replace a board. I still sometimes do it to this day if I want to just have an easy install where I'm not thinking, trying to think too much, but I'm, you know, replacing a capacitor. Um, you just want to just take a picture first and remove one wire at a time. That way, you know, um, it's going back in the way you took it out. That way, if you, you don't have to wonder, oh, did I put that back in right or potentially put it back in wrong and have to do a repair or fix something you blew up so essentially um, yeah, taking pictures of things and um, just trying to be as thorough as possible in the first place that's gonna help out a lot as far as um, you know speeding up your days making you a little bit more efficient during the day so it's a quick one but it helps all right tip number five is going to be fill your bag you know fill your bag properly my bag man I need to weigh it, but I know my bag weighs at least 50 pounds, man. And that's just the, you know, the Tech MC bag. But I've got um, another bag on my hip, uh, my Vito Pro Pack, little hip pouch bag. I've got a video on that if you want to check it out. But I've got literally everything that I probably would ever need to work on a system. Not to repair everything, but to fully do a full diagnostic on a system for the most part. Um, and that, that saves you from having to go back and forth to the truck so much, so many times. Because that's really, I mean, believe it or not, that adds up over time. So, uh, there, it's kind of a, you know, it's um catch, it's like a catch-22 because, yeah, the bag is going to be heavy. It's going to give you a little more wear and tear on your body. But it's definitely going to save you a lot of time. So, I just keep, you know, I keep basically a lot of, basically everything I'll ever need in that bag. So, um just keep your bag properly stocked. Keep it. Um, just keep every tool you're gonna need in there. And don't work. Don't don't skimp on the bag. Uh, that's gonna save you a whole lot of time. It's probably gonna be one of the biggest sa time savers. Is just not having to go back and forth to that truck. So that's uh, that's a pretty good tip there, I think. And uh, tip six is going to be last but not least. It's not really an um, amazing tip, but it's just something to think about. And that's just going to be use all your senses whenever you um, first get to a call. Um, usually, like for instance, well, I guess you can't use all your senses, but you want to use your hearing, you want to use your visual, visual inspection, um, smell, um, touch, feel the unit, see if anything's hot, see if that condenser fan is hot when you walk up to it, listen in here if you can hear any humming in any units by going into... Um, if you're checking the air handler, you first thing I listen for is the hum of a transformer. Can I hear that transformer humming? If I don't hear it humming, then I'll probably know that um, I'll check. The first thing I'm checking is the voltage, see if I'm even getting any voltage to it. So try to um, just use your senses a little bit when you're initially walking up to a system. And that'll kind of steer you in the um, trajectory that you need to go, uh, just at least to start. And that's pretty much it. That's that's um, all I can think about uh, as of right now without making the video too long. But yeah, so I'll leave the rest uh, up to you guys in the comments. See if you can add to it because this is a community. I like to try to, this is, uh, this is what I'm doing this for us for learning, educational purposes. I'm learning and I like to teach, teach this um, type of stuff. So if you guys can add in the comments different tips or advice to, uh, and like I say, I can learn from us myself I can get a whole lot faster on the field so different tips and advice that you use to get a little faster or a whole lot faster let me know in the comments man and just let me know as, as well what you think about this video all right I'll see you on the next one thanks for watching